Well, hello everybody um, here in this live stream at Burma Institute. Um, my name is Sil Meijer and today I'm going to do a um, very delicate, tiny uh, work arrangement with a really pretty, really, really pretty Mobach vase from Holland. It's, um, uh, this is an, um, an old one from the 80s. Oh. Yes. I don't know if anybody hears me, but I'm not in view. Something's wrong with the view. Okay, we're back. Oh, we're back. So um, I start a little bit all over again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here in Burma Institute for the live stream. My name is Sil Meyer, and today I have a very delicate and tiny uh, arrangement with this beautiful um, bowl uh, made by Mobach um, in Utrecht. It's a very old one from the 80s. Well, what's old? But um, I weave some um, branches and uh, leaves through these holes. There are two holes in it and maybe I can show you just a little bit well, there's water in it, of course, but there are two holes in this bowl. Well, there's. And um, what I did was making some weaves and reds. And we'll show you a few of them I prepared in advance. And. Um, once already finished, I make this one, well, I hope you can see this on camera, but because it's very tiny, with a senecio uh, plant, pieces of the plant, um, as, um, eryngium, the smaller flower of that. Um, of course, I had some hedra leaves, and, um, well, these are the, is the basic of it, um, this string and I'm going to put this in. This is all made on a wire and if you see uh, later on the, um, the, the edit version has um, all these uh, tiny details um, I made in, in advance so you can, sh you can see that after that because it's very difficult to so So, Sil, we have some people saying hello in the chat. We have Roxanne Rudit saying hello from Michigan, USA. Well, hello, Roxanne. We have Jonathan Rodriguez saying hi from Mexico. Oh, I wow. enjoyed all your videos. Okay, wow. <laughs> and we have Joyce Shabishik saying hi, everyone. I'm okay. ready to join a new live stream. Okay, well, welcome you all, Joyce and... Um, I think she was viewing the, the last one two, day, two weeks ago. Um, this is a smaller one I prepared also in advance and I want to um, uh, make it here. And it's also on the wire. Well, I think it's not easy to see, but and I made this in the uh, Hedra uh, branch. Well, I told you this this is not a, a live stream with a really big one or a really colorful one. This is all tiny leaves and tiny things. We make these wraps at the Burma Inter Institute in if you are doing the tiara and also the techniques you use in corsage or whatever the tiny things you make. So I put it here so can turn it around a little bit and I want to show you how I make this this on wire so I have my materials here berries and pieces of the senecio plant um, I have the arabicum and um, of 
course, the leaves and the erythium. So what I do, and I hope you can see this on camera. <laughs> um, mostly I make bigger arrangements and colorful arrangements. And this time I thought maybe I can do something really spring, soft colors, soft, um, um, little bit of spring arrangements. And um, well, actually today it's snowing here in Aalsmeer. So nothing about spring, but everything about winter. And well, in March we have this periods that you can sit outside on a terrace drinking a wine or uh, walking in the snow. It's both of those things are possible here now. So today it's snowing. Maybe the American viewers or can Canadian viewers do also have a lot of snow. So as you see, I just wrap these with a little bit colorful green small wires, iron wires. And oh, something's breaking. It's live, so sometimes they don't want it. <laughs> so hopefully the camera will see this. This is the wire I use. We call this bullion wire, but I don't really know if there is another name for that. I think maybe just aluminium wire. Yeah, it's an it's an aluminium wire, yeah. but a very, very thin one, like a. Is it zero point four or? Well, I think maybe six? it's even even thinner as well. Zero point four, I think. Yeah, that will be the same. Really not uh, a thicker wire. It's maybe it's even thinner than uh, 0 0.4. And the senatio is very delicate. Breaks very easily, so I have to be patient and be very not squeeze too hard. And you can also can put all these parts. Um, on a wire, like I did with the um, uh, Hedra leaf, I put it on a wire and you can ba uh, bow it in all the directions you want. But it's a lot of work. And then we will hear tonight at 8 o'clock still. So <laughs> to make it a little bit faster, <laughs> I do it with only this bouillon wires. And um, oh, just to tell, this is also wired. It has a, it's an iron in it, and this is bind wire. So these two make that we have a very uh, flexible um, rope of flowers, branches, leaves, and whatever you can do. And at the end, I will glue these in. So. So we have uh, Margaret Pasman in the chat saying hello everybody from Hardewijk. Okay. Uh, nice to see you uh, again. And we have Henny Decker also saying hello everybody. Okay. Um, and um, let me see. Ah, Roxanne Woerick says snow here too. Uh, okay. Covering all like a Christmas card. We oh. have nearly all yard bare of snow just yesterday. Can't wait for spring. Okay, yeah, we, we also can't wait for spring, so um, and we have a few hours with sunshine and last week, I think, last few days with sunshine, and um, well, that was, uh, that was nice. And then you have this spring in your system, and then the snow comes again, so it's a little bit of a change now. But, well, within a few days, it will be gone. And then we will, for sure, we'll have spring somewhere. 
Um, this is a hole here and a hole here, and now I'm having a delicate thing on the live stream because I don't know really if it works. So hopefully, keep fingers crossed. Well, it's out here, and then I just pull it in, and then hopefully it will stay there. Hook it on. And that's the nice thing about this bind wire. It looks very natural, like a rope. And I think it's a paper, paper on the outside. Yes, there's and a paper wrapping yeah. on the outside and inside is a iron wire. Yeah, and it's a little bit thicker than the, than the other one, than the bouillon wire that I uh, use. And um, I like the natural color of that. It's... Um, um, green and you have them brown or in just a natural kind of cream color well it works yeah <laughs> i was a bit a little bit afraid of this so i have a few wraps put them here and well with the green color then Somebody's falling. Um, so th this is the basic of the um, uh, of the arrangement, and you see all these tiny wired things. Um, I have some extras to give it a little bit of spring color, and this is also a winding. No, it's um, um whoa. Now, you need to help me, Angelica, for the word. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> um, this is something, ik heb, dat heb ik gereigen. Dus reigen is de uh, word. Ja, uh, yeah, Angelica finds it a difficult word too. So, so you I see. don't know the word for it yet, but it is, the wire is piercing through yeah. the petals. Ja, yeah. and these are the, the small leaves of uh, Gerbera. I will show you the flower here, these, and I just picked off all the leaves, flower leaves, and of course that's very delicate, but um, I spray them with special spray for leaves, which you can use, and that will um, keep the, the, the flower leaves from drying out, so you can use them. Uh, for example, in bridal work or, um, well, all kinds of... Body jewelry. Yeah, well. And I, you can buy it here in the shop, of course. <laughs> and um, so, and the nice thing that I didn't put them on a spot, I just, yeah weave them through so we have a little bit of color in this arrangement not too much and because this is such a fine work it's not easy to talk and work together today <laughs> maybe talking is not my um, difficult thing i can talk a lot so we have a question from Margaret Posma. Okay. Uh, is that a white vase or a ostrich egg? Whoa. That's a <laughs> well, question, right? And that's the, well, the ostrich egg is coming, well, in the next one. And um, it's, it's white, but not really, uh, really white. There is a little bit of natural kind of colors in it, like gray. And it has beautiful green parts in this break here, in this, well, uh, hopefully you can see that. Well, my finger's in, in front of it, of course. So it's green, and there are green spots into it too. Not, not really white, more, well, how do you call it? Broken, uh, white? broken white, like that. And... Um,
but it's sort of the same color as an ostrich uh, egg so this was an uh, you paid attention uh, very well so as you see the color of the gerbra is not too bright and that should be nice in this arrangement if you have a really bright color then um, and then I have a few flowers from Arabicum and I have everywhere I have small holes I just push them in between these holes and so still there is probably a chance that people can't hear me because my microphone isn't working. So oh. I will be talking a little bit louder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, we have Angelica here <laughs> shouting. <laughs> so if there is anyone in the chat that can let me know if they can hear me uh, through the microphone or not, that would be very, very helpful. And we can check if we can do something about it. Um, and further, uh, another question from Margaret Postman. Um, is it possible uh, to uh, tell her what the names of the greens are? Uh, and especially a bit more in Dutch because her English is a Oh, okay, great. well, that's okay. Uh, but I think the names are universal. Yeah, the names are universal if you have them in Latin. Um, so here's an asparagus. It's a variety, uh, uh, well, a very fine variety. We have galax leaves here. Uh, hopefully she can follow now. And um, this grass, which I use, is very flexible. And then, of course, the name is flexigras. Um, and I have hedra leaves. Um, and the senatio plant, so etches plant in it uh, in, in Dutch. Um, Framboos disteltje, that's the Dutch name for the eryngium. Um, Gerbra, well, that's universal. Senatio, I already said. Uh, did I miss something? Well, hopefully she has the. And this is a part of a branch of only the branch of the hedra. I think I have them all. Um, is she happy with this? Or I think so. We will know in a second. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now you can see that we really are live, because if you have a few small technical problems, then, of course, really, it is live. Uh, well, this should be it. And I think I just put him off from this lazy Susan, because um, she can go away now. I always like that word, lazy Susan, for somebody who's turning around the whole day so oh. margaret says thanks i am happy okay well you're welcome margaret and i hope i didn't skip one so well this will be it hopefully it's good to see you on camera we will make some pictures and they will be on the um well edited version, edited version of course and um, well, this is it. Um, I can have sin here for my next arrangement. So be careful because mm -hmm. it's a really delicate one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Margaret, here are the eggs from uh, the ostrich. And this is a, f um, a bowl for fruit. It has holes in it. Well, well, it's impossible to see. So all kinds of holes in it. And um, because I was inspired on the bird and the spring and everything, so I weaved a, a bowl. 
and um, we al also can see the, um, the techniques of that. So a little bit, so especially for the eggs. So I weave the ball. This is willow. Um, of course, birds are weaving now and spring is coming. So I thought eggs, weaving, nest, well, and then the snow come. <laughs> so sort of winter, spring kind of arrangement. Um, I put a little bit of uh, oasis here in the middle of it because I want to have some flowers in this arrangement. These plants, I just uh, bind in with the bind wire again. Um, uh, I have some hedra uh, branches and of course the eggs and that all together is what is now. I'm gonna have to turn a little bit around to finish it and oh and I have some blue grapes well I, yeah that's the English word um, muscari is of course the the um, um, Latin name and yeah well small bulbs with a really pretty blue flower everybody knows them I think everybody loves them my father-in-law uh, was a grower of these for years and years a very good one he's 93 years old now um, but not doing the, the uh, plants anymore enjoying retired life it yes he is and still loving these flowers. So first I do some Galax blaadjes, uh, leaves, sorry. <laughs> I was a little bit. And just to cover all the oasis. And then after that, put a few of these muscadis in. I took off all the soil well not all of it but there's a little bit there still and then i have a um, uh, olive olive um, cocktail pricker well what is it um, is cocktail pricker is not <laughs> you can eat olives with it yes. yeah you can eat just for olives and you can also do um, uh, these bulbs in it um, a lot of people ask me is this hurting or damaging the, the, um, the flower. Well, of course, if the flower is still in, completely in the bulb, then you have to be taking care not to push it too far in because the flower is there and will be damaged and not come out. But now the muscadi is all out, so you just can push them in. And sometimes even people do two. So this is a little bit stronger and then you can push them in. But this is such a tiny bulb and well two is not really necessary in this case so a question from Marta Plasman okay are the ostrich eggs uh, for sale well at, at our place uh, uh, this was a thing I searched everywhere everywhere for these uh, ostrich um, uh, eggs and uh, my lovely colleague Pauline, thank you Pauline, <laughs> brought them this morning because we couldn't find them anywhere. So of course, yeah, they are for sale somewhere, but not here not Bournemouth, and not in, I think you can't find one in the whole Aalsmeer area. So <laughs> we searched everywhere. Uh, yeah, maybe there's an ostrich farm somewhere here in Holland where you can buy them. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Oh, and we have Hans Dalleman saying, Hi, Sil, I like your arrangements. <laughs> well, thank you, Hans. <laughs> I think he likes the Miscari too. <laughs> I have so. For sure, he will loves the Miscari. So, push them in. They also have a, a very delicate smell, not too uh, hard like um, hyacinthus have, but if they flower, they have a, well, a good smell, not too heavy. Oh, this one's coming here. 
And when I look outside, still snowing. So the nest and everything. Um, I have a few other eggs. And these are very small ones. I like to work with these because of the color. And um, I think it's nice if you have, oops, they are going away. If you have these uh, small eggs and the big eggs, these are from a tiny bird in Dutch, you call it kwartel. I really don't know the other name or a Latin name for this bird. Oh, quail. Yeah, quail. Oh, quail. Oh, well, I have some. Thank you, Sin. <laughs> Good assistance here. Eh? <laughs> they have to shout today, but um, uh, <laughs> well, we have the small birds and um, um, some people say they are deaf, but it's not really true. I think it's just a saying, a Dutch saying. Um, I use them just to yeah, throw them everywhere in the nest and just for color and I love the combination with the brown bowl and the brown spots on the eggs. So, well, next we have this beautiful epiphyllum, one of my favorite plants to use. It's very strong, very thick um, um, plant, and it has beautiful flowers. It only blooms in one night with a strong smell and um, uh, they only bloom in the night, just not during the day, but only in the night. And um, you can use them dry. They, yeah, they don't really need the water. They last very long without any water. And it's also, well, if you put them in water and after a few weeks, the first roots are coming and you can make another one and give your friends and family and the neighbors and everybody <laughs> some of these because it's very they're very easy to um, to reproduce reproduce sorry it's a difficult word so I use them dry and um, I use also use them a lot because it's a very good shape and beautiful um, color and well strong it is an interesting shape for a leaf. Yeah, I think in, in English they, they call them fishbone, okay. fishbone plant. Makes sense. Um, yeah, it makes sense, yeah. And in Dutch, for especially for the people who... Uh, it's saag cactus, and it's like soy with a... Uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, well, that's also the, um, the shape of that. Um, well, this is a material I green material I like to use very much because you can do really everything with it. You just can uh, well weave or make knobs or whatever you can do. Uh, flexigras I use it in the other arrangement too, and in a nest it's very pretty because it has a small green accent, not too not too big, not too, uh, um, well, how you call it, aanwezig. Well, that's not a good English word. <laughs> but, and also very strong. You can do it in water and then, it, of course, it will last longer. But if you use it dry, that's also possible. I just weave this through the nest, like the birds do. I'm always impressed by all these birds that make pretty nests. Especially I once was in Costa Rica and then you have these weaving birds and they make several nests. The male makes several nests and then the female is choosing the best one and she is damaging or breaking the ones that she don't like. Well, that's my girl. <laughs> well. But it's very, they make really pretty nests. Uh, impressive how these small birds do nests like that. 
I have to work a lot on this one and well and you're using your hands Birds I have only two have hands their mouth. and everything and yeah and they only have um, just and nobody learned them that's also what it is they just do it well we had a, a nest in our garden last year really nice one from the well it's from the miro i don't know a uh, blackbird blackbird yeah i was i was and um they made such a pretty nest in the garden we have a lot of nests in the garden of course but this one was so pretty with branches and moss and it fell off so I can just look at it very, very good. I saw that even they used hairs of my dog to weave in the nest. Well, here's the plexiglass. I think this will be enough. And then I have some gerbras, the ones that I use them the flower leaves from in the last arrangement and this is also why why i um, put the um, uh, oasis in because this one really needs to be in water all the other ones are just turn it a little bit and then i want to weave this gerbra in and that's tricky um, because it's not a willow, so hopefully on this live stream it won't break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it stays. <laughs> like that. So, Gerba is a favorite flower from my daughter. So, hopefully she's watching. <laughs> and... Um, And you have them in all kinds of colors, of course. Lots of, lots of colors. And this is a very soft color. Pretty in this uh, arrangement, I think. And looking for a place where I can bow it a little bit and also can push it in the oasis. So it's here. Hopefully you can see it now, yeah. Oh. So. Turn this. a little bit of color and I used a lot of spring flowers of course well gerbra is not really like a spring flower but um, the um, muscaris yeah thank you Angelica <laughs> the muscaris are of course and it's not a long period of time that they are available. So when they are there, I always want to use them. So I think we have enough gerbras in. And we have some willows left. Well, this is a willow uh, branch in which, we, which I uh, weave this uh, nest or bow or whatever you can call it. And this is another willow variety and um, it's the bushy willow. And I like them, they're very soft and has a nice color too. And of course you can weave this in. I put them in, the in oasis in water and uh, I do this on purpose because it, they will last longer, much longer. And of course you can, um, do it dry too, no problem, but then, yeah, 
they won't last that long. Yeah, the kitty cats will fall off. Yeah, the, the, and the softness is going away very, very soon. So this is the reason why I give them some water. Well, I thought there was a hole to weave, but it was... <laughs> there was a fishbone cactus in the way. So... We have some... So you have lots and lots of varieties of willow in, uh, in the world. You have really big ones and very small ones only are underground, very low ones, in the Arctic. And um, in Holland we have the, what we call Knotwilge. <laughs> and um, this is a willow that we cut every several years, two or three years, and then we cut them. And um, we use the branches for making baskets or um, well, all kinds of use. Um, just looking for a spot to put him in. He won't co cooperate with me. Yeah, he's here. And we use them for um, making baskets, weaving baskets, or, uh, well. Is it also the one that you make chairs? from and tables. Yeah, yeah you have a lot of different varieties and um, it's not especially the cutting willow, the, the knot wheel which we use, but well I'm not sure about the variety but there are so many and uh, this is the one, um, the, cut, the willows we cut and this is the one that has the pushy willow but they don't use this one for baskets or this is really for it's beautiful um, soft pieces well and then I did something with the tulips <laughs> they're a little bit soft now and uh, I want to weave them in too and of course they need water and what I did well this one is very good to see it's not um, it's about two hours that I left them dry you can see it on the branch too it's very uh, dry now and if they are dry they get a little bit softer so it's much much easier to weave them in and um, uh, a tulip is a very uh, well it's not a delicate one you just cut it put him in water and after an hour he will be strong and uh, just grow further and further this is um well I forgot the name of the variety sorry uh, maybe we can put that later on them. Yeah. But it's a, if you can see, it's a very creamy kind of tulip. And um, I like it very much with the same color as the ostrich egg. So this is the reason why I choose this one. And of course, in Holland, we have so, so many varieties uh, uh, of tulips. And this is the, the season. Well, I will turn this a little bit so I can show you how easy you can weave them in now because they're soft. Oh, and if I say it's easy, it won't work. So that's always on a live stream. <laughs> well, you can see normally you can't do this with a tulip. Then it will uh, split away. So they really are soft now. Uh, but they need water. Eh? Now uh, is the time that they uh, are in the oasis and have to search for a spot. And then and then they're in. Hopefully, you can see it. They're in now here. Well, tulips are, normally it was a spring flower, and now in Holland we have tulips almost year-round. The first ones are coming in summer, end of summer, September. And the uh, last ones, well, here till May, something like that. June, even. So that's not really a spring flower anymore. Only the outside tulips from 
the um, area close to Keukenhof. Um, a few ones are still growing outside and um, these are only in spring of course. But most of the tulips are breeded in greenhouses and um, in the area of Rulefaustein are a lot of those breeders. And, um, millions and millions of, of tulips are from there and going all around the world. Also a lot of tulips from the area of North Holland. Ah, this one is really, <laughs> really soft now. <laughs> but for the tulip it's no problem. And you can, well, of course you can see uh, I can do everything with it now. Well, looking for a place where some water is. Uh -uh. Well, no questions anymore. No, it's a bit quiet. Yeah, well, everything is very clear then. I think it's a good sign. Everybody's yeah. enjoying it, I guess. Yeah, I was afraid that um, this two arrangements were too tiny to see. And, but Sin is doing a good job here with the camera next to me. Well, you can see all the tulips are going through and through. And an hour or so is, is, an, is enough, an hour, two hours, and then the, the tulips will be um, soft enough to, uh, to work with. Uh, now the tulip is not really doing what I want. This is a little bit harder one. And I use this flexi grass, like a, just sort of like a rope. It's um, easy material just to, well, as you see, it's like almost like a, sewing and here he will come I think it's difficult to see this tiny thing on camera but I will turn this around and you can see what happened the tulip here now is just winded on the branch and here's one coming off so this is the first one I already said <laughs> and I'm gonna use um, a plexigras also for this one he's not doing what I want so and now hopefully you can see how I do this just go around so Roxanne says, so inspired to design something like your design. Thanks for the great tip about getting tulip soft for weaving. Yeah, well, that's uh, well nice that you are using this tip. And you can, well, especially with the long tulip, the French tulips you uh, can buy. Well, I think that season is almost gone, but um, they are very long and you can weave them perfectly. As you see, well, you can see it's in here now. And um, just with this one, flexigras. You also have this, the other one that's called speergras. It's also a very good one to weave with. And that's the one that's breaking. So you can make nice hooks and harder work, more modern kind of shaped work. And this, this grass is more uh, with circles, with round forms, very good. So, the last tulip is coming in. I hope I have a spot left, yeah. You see it here. Going next to the ostrich egg. And 
and here it is. Also rem removed a lot of leaves from the tulips and especially do that because the tulips sometimes, um, especially when they're on in the beginning of, um, of, the, of the blooming uh, periods, the leaf will cover the, the flower. And as you see, I just took off these leaves and now the flower is more um, visual. You, you can see it better. And it doesn't damage the, um, the tulip, it just still grows same same thing, nothing uh, happens with it. The tulip is a very flexible flower. You can just, well, like the Dutch do, buy a few tulips, put them on the back of the bike, and then bike uh, in half an hour home, and then uh, just put the tulips a little bit soft in the water, and nothing will, uh, no problem. So I think it's almost the last flower I'm going to use, well not flower, it's Hypericum Bess, and well I choose this one, also in the other arrangement because they're really bright um, color and the same shape as the eggs have, a uh, round shape like an egg, so this is a good um, combination, I use them short of course, I can uh, weave a few in too, but I use them short in the heart of the nest. Just to cover some last pieces of oasis. And have some bright green in the middle of the arrangement. Hypericum bashes you have in uh, berries, sorry, you have in all uh, uh, all different colors. This really bright green ones, and you have the darker ones, but also a beautiful soft color uh, like uh, the gerbra, and um, yeah, almost red. Of course, they're more available in the autumn, but well, in this time, well, you can do too. It's a sort of year-round product and very strong, of course. I also take off the leaves from this one because I have this beautiful brown uh, leaves from the Galax inside and, in, and if I have these green ones from the Hypericum too, they will cover the brown leaves and I don't want that. And I like the combination with the um, bright green and the dark um, color of the Galax leaves. Galax is also a very strong leaf you can use. I think it's from America. I'm not sure, but I think it's from America. And it's a plant that's easy growing. And much used in arrangements because it's a strong one. Um, no, well, they have nice green colors, but also these darker varieties here. You can see the beautiful dark variety. I see a small hole here, so I have to cover that one. Put also some moss in. I had this this moss in. I will it's a small piece fresh. You can buy it dry. In Axel, but um, Axel's in the in the web shop, but also there's fresh one available. I don't think in the web shop, but the dry one is also very good. And you can even make it wet again, and then and then it's fresh again. It's fresh <laughs> again. It's um, <laughs> sort of miracle material. Dried up. Put them in uh, lukewarm water, and uh, they will just start growing again. So here I have a small corner with the hole. Put some branches here and of course the back. I think I forgot to tell that I have a small plastic um, bowl in there for the oasis of course because the holes in this fruit 
bowl. Well, the water will soak through and that <laughs> will be, uh, will be I good. I was wondering why there was no water on the table. I yeah. Was, ah, but it has <laughs> holes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Well, this is, this is it, I think. Um, well, yeah, I have all my flowers in and um, we have still some time left, but whoa. Um, a branches, willow branches, um, fishbone cactus, um, hedra branches, of course don't forget the flexi grass and then all the plants and flowers, pushy willows. And um, hopefully you enjoy this um, um, video and well, maybe some inspiration and see you next time. Well, okay. Thank you. Um, so um, if everybody liked this, you can like and subscribe, hit that bell button for notifications and please go check out our Patreon for some yeah. goodies behind the scenes. Okay. Thank you so much, Sil. Okay, you're <laughs> welcome. See you, hope to see you next time. I want to have Easter brunch now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it stops snowing. Here you go.